Good evening, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. This has been Brother Boo once again tonight. I'm going to talk uh, another topic. Uh, the title of this topic is about the power of the Holy Eucharist. And before we will start with that, let us pray first. Let us ask the guidance from the Holy Spirit so that we might be able to understand what this Holy Eucharist is all about, especially with the Roman Catholic. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father, we would like to thank you for tonight. We ask your guidance, we ask your Holy Spirit to move to each and every one of us here so that we might know, guide us, especially Mama Mary, we ask your intercession because we will share and talk about the Holy Eucharist. It is the integral part of our Christian life and give us more understanding as we ask this true Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, tonight, I'm going to talk about the power of the Holy Eucharist. Now, why is it power? And remember that the, the one who is uh, instituted the, the Holy Eucharist is no other than Jesus Christ. The blood and the the bread is not just only symbolizing Jesus Christ, but it is Christ himself that is found during the liturgy of the Holy Eucharist. Why is it power? Because it has the power to give us eternal life. Why is it powerful? Because it has the power to change our lives, that we might go to heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ because of this Holy Eucharist. Why is it powerful? Because it speaks about the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. Why is it powerful? Because it is a love story between man and God. According to St. Therese of Calcutta, she said that the, the greatest love story on planet Earth can be found in the tiny white house that is through what we call the Holy Eucharist. That's why as Christians, as Catholic, as believer, as believers in the Lord, we really believe that this is the power of God Almighty. It has power to change us. Now, there are some questions that uh, we're going to ponder as we carry on. Now, there are some questions, especially the non-Catholic. You know, they ask this, what is the difference between the Holy Communion and the Holy Eucharist? Why bread and wine? Okay, Is it in remembrance of me only? Now, let us try to answer that question later on as we go back. But let us move first. Let us open our Bible first in the book of John chapter 6, verses 48 no, up to the last uh, 67. Now, I'm going to read this one so that we may understand the context, the story, is it really Jesus Christ instituted the, 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 what they call the Holy Eucharist or the bread and the wine? Is it really turned to his blood or real flesh? Now, let us try to look at the evidence that is, can be found in the book of John chapter 6. I'm going to read again and then little by little we're going to exegete so that we might fully know and understand what is really uh, meant by the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said in the verse 48, He said, I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert. Now, let us try to know what is this manna in the desert. Now, remember, during the time of Moses, they're all hungry. They need food to eat, but there was no food enough. And even there was no food. And then they start praying. Moses start praying that the Lord God of Israel will provide food for them. So early in the morning when they wake up, they found the manna. It is just like a uh, parabang snow ba. Pero it's nice to eat. Now the word manna is, what is it in the Hebrew word? What is this? What is it? So they eat the manna in the desert in order for them to sustain. Yet, Jesus Christ said, they died. They died. But there is the bread that comes down from heaven. So, tingnan niyo kapatid. Jesus Christ equate manna to this bread that comes from, from, from the from heaven. Which a man may eat and not die. So, there's a difference. If you eat this bread, 
which came down from heaven, you will not die. Whereas when you eat the manna in the Old Testament, you will die. Jesus said that one. Sa 51, meron pa dito. Sabi niya, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. So meaning, He is the manna of life that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever because this bread is my flesh and I will give for the life of the world. So why is it important? Because the life, the bread, the bread that Jesus Christ gave to us is his flesh and it will give life to the whole world, to those who believe, to those who eat this bread of life. Then let us continue. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So here comes the carnality of the mind of the Jewish people. Actually, they didn't understand. They don't understand because at first they don't believe Jesus Christ. But in fact, they neglect Jesus Christ as their Messiah. If you are not a believer of God, you will not, you will not able to understand on what Jesus Christ is telling to us, especially His Word, especially the Bible. That's why many of us today, when they read the Bible, they don't understand, they just sleep right away. Jesus said to them, I will tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, the flesh of the Son of Man, the bread, and Jesus Christ is talking about the bread, and drink His blood, you have no life in you. So there is no life in us, meaning we will have not have the life of Jesus Christ if we don't eat his flesh and drink his blood. Whoever eats my flesh, my flesh, and drinks my blood has eternal life. So why is it important? Because it gives us eternal life. Is it, it is powerful? Yes, because it gives us eternal life. And not only that, Jesus said, I will raise him up at the last day. So on the last day, on his return, those who believe in him, those who follow him, those who died before his return, will rise back from them. For my flesh, ito na, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Ano sinasabi nito? Totoong pagkain. Yung katawan niya ay totoong pagkain at saka totoong inumin. Hindi lang simbolo. Unlike before as a Protestant, we don't believe this thing called Holy Eucharist from the, the Roman Catholic. Because what we believe only, this is just only a symbol, this is just only in commemoration of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. But if you try to look at on the other way around, Jesus Christ is telling himself that this is my blood. Many say, he holds something. He holds the bread at the time and the wine. Sabi niya, this is my flesh and this is my blood. Sabi pa niya, this is real blood, real food, and my blood is real drink. Totoo hindi. Totoong pagkain. Meaning, na-consecrate na. No? When Jesus Christ hold that one, He consecrate that host that will turn into His real food, real body, and real blood of Jesus Christ. Klarong-klaro sa Biblia. Klarong-klaro. Okay, let us continue. Who eats my flesh and drink my blood remains in him, in me, and I in him. This is fusion, fusing. If we eat the blood and drink his wine, Jesus Christ will remain in us, in me, in us, and I in him. Sabi ni Jesus Christ. So, kaya nga eh, sabi niya, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So, the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue of Capernaum. So, kapatid, it is very clear, no? Sa Biblia, makita natin na talagang totoong pagkain yung katawan ni Jesus, kinakonsecrate niya at the time of the upper room of Jerusalem where the 12 disciples gathered together during the Passover and then they celebrated what they call the the Eucharist. Now, let us continue first, no? Before I'm going to share anything more so para maklarify natin to. On 61, aware that this disciple will grumbling about this because Jesus said to them, does this offend you? 
What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? He's talking about the second return. The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. And yet they are, there are some of you who do not believe. Now, sabi ni Jesus Christ dito kapatid, the Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. Now, if we will just look at the Holy Spirit, the Holy Eucharist with all our understanding with our carnality of mind it counts nothing but if you look at the Eucharist of God by using the power of God the Holy Spirit that is in life yeah, and if we allow the, the Spirit of God like the mind of Christ surely enough we will understand and we will know that it is the actual body and the actual blood of Jesus Christ now there are some people is asking me that sabi dito na itong sinabi ni Jesus hindi to literal because he said that uh, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life now let us try to understand the context within that passage of scripture Jesus said I have spoken the words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life so if Jesus Christ speak the word and it is only spirit, meaning to say that uh, that horse or bread or ano lang kung ang, ang, pag, ang intindin natin is the bread and wine, it is just only a word. Ang importante dun is spirito. Walang kabuluhan kapatid. You know why? Because Jesus Christ himself, after he consecrated the wine and the bread, ito na sinabi niya. The word I have spoken to our spirit and they are life. Meaning, if we try to look at the Holy Eucharist by our own understanding, parang wala lang. Wala tayong nakita. But beyond that, if we try to connect with the Spirit of God and understand everything with the Spirit of God, with the Spirit of Christ, or the mind of Christ, kahit yung tiny white horse na nakita mo ay host pa rin, nakita mo white pa rin at saka white, but on the other side, around on the spiritual realm realm it really turned into the actual body and the actual blood of jesus christ that is how we understand the roman catholic about our teaching because that can be also found in the bible as what i have read to you a while ago that this is not just a myth that this is not just a symbol this is not just a no lang is not but this is all literal Jesus mentioned sabi niya this is my body this is my blood pour out to you amen so at least we know already the benefit that we can get that if we eat drink the blood we will have eternal life Jesus Christ will live in us and we will live in him and Jesus Christ will be with us forever that's the promise of God to us that each one of us might know might understand now, let us try to look up the CCC, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Why is it that we, the Roman Catholic, believe that it is the actual presence of God? Now, in the CCC 1373, the presence of Christ by the power of His words is present in many ways. Actually, in many ways. To His church, when we gather together, when we pray together, the Spirit of God is there. When we have a community like a charismatic community, when we sing songs of praise, the Spirit of the Lord is there because the Bible says, Two or three gather together in my name, I will be in the midst of them. Yun ang sinasabi ni Jesus at yun ang sinasabi na also sa Biblia. Now, the presence of God by the power of His Word can be found in His church can be found in the sacrifice of Mass. But He is present most especially in the Eucharistic species. Meaning to say, every time that you eat the body and drink the blood of Jesus Christ, the moment you eat that one, you allow Jesus Christ to enter into your life. And that is the time, my fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord, you have Jesus now in your life. That's why we need to focus. We need to talk to Him at least five minutes of talking to him lord you are in me this is what you promised to us that once we eat and drink your blood you will live in us lord 
I will talk to you. This is my prayer. Lord, hear me. And Jesus Christ will listen to us. That is very important for us. Now, in in the CCC also, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 13, 13 37, the conversion of bread and wine into Christ's body and blood, that Christ becomes present in the in this sacrament, the sacrament of the Eucharist. So, during conversion of bread and wine, sabi ko kanina ka dito, sabi ni Jesus, na yung word na pinaspoke niya is spirit and life. Yes! That's why every time you partake, you eat the bread and wine, it's still bread, it's still wine. But if you allow your spirit to activate, to move, to understand everything, that is in the spirit. That bread and wine, though it's still a tiny white horse, that bread and wine will turn into body, the actual body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is amazing. This is amazing because we're the only church who believe that this tiny white horse turned into real food, into real body and into real blood, uh, blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, another CCC, Catechism of the Catholic Faith. Of course, when Jesus Christ said, this is consecration, this is my body which will be given up for you. This is, this is the cup of my blood. It turned actually, instantly. Anong sinabi ni Paul also? Ito ang sinabi ni Paul in 1 Corinthians 11.23 to 32. For I received from the Lord what I pass unto you, the Lord Jesus, in the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Okay, merong remembrance of me. At tingnan natin yan, kapatid, kasi yung mga non-Catholic, the focus on the remembrance of me. Without understanding, when Jesus Christ said, in remembrance of me. Let us continue. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance for me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you pro proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Now, sabi ng mga non-Catholic, sabi nila, in remembrance of me alone, brother. So, hindi yung literal. Sino nagsabi hindi literal? When in fact, Jesus Christ said already in the book of John chapter 6, this is my body. My body is the real food and real drink. Meaning, there was already a consecration happened at that time. So, kaya nga sabi ko sa CCC kanina, sa 14.12, when Jesus said, this is my body, he is, that is his body. Hindi niya sinasabi niya, this is just the symbol of my body. But he said, this is my body, and this is the cup of my blood. Hindi sinabi ni Jesus, that this is the symbol of my blood. But he declared that that tiny white house, at saka yung wine, yung bread, declare niya, niya totoong katawan niya. It is very clear. Now, what do you mean by what we call do this in remembrance of me? Now, the word in remembrance of me, it is just not commem commemorating on what happened 2,000 years ago in the upper room of Israel. But this in remembrance of me, it is a continuous action on what Jesus did 2,000 years ago upon consecration of the bread and even until now, the bread still will be consecrated. And who has the power and the authority to consecrate the blood, the, 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 the bread, and the wine? Simple lang. Yung nasa Melchizedek order. Sino yung mga nasa Melchizedek order? Yung mga kaparian natin. Kaya nga, mga kaparian, if you listen to this, you have a big rule in our Catholic faith. Without a priest, priest, there is no consecration of the body. There is no Holy Eucharist. And we can commit sin against God if there is no priest. That's why we should love our priest. We should pray for our priest. We should, we should continue to, to protect them even. Because you know what? Importante yung mga kaparian sa buhay natin, kapatid. Kung wala sila, wala tayong ano, consecration. No? Yun ang sabi sa Biblia. No? That's, it's very clear to us that it is the only, the priest, priest na makakonsecrate. Now, according to the Catechism of, of the Catholic Church 1413, by the consecration of transubstantiation of the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ is brought about 
under the consecrated species of bread and wine, Christ himself, living and glorious, is present in true, real, and substantial manner. His body and his blood with his, with his soul and his divinity. That's why sa prayer natin sa the chapter sa divine mercy. Diba may sabi doon, Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood and soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Our response for the atonement of our sin and of this world. So, we have to offer back to Him. You know what? It is pleasing to God. When you talk to God, Lord, we offer back to you Jesus Christ. That's what happened 2,000 years ago. We offer to you His blood, His divinity. It is pleasing. It is a sweet aroma to God because it has a connection. That's why we have this offering even until now because worship without sacrifice is not worship. It is just an entertainment. That's what the non-Catholic did. They sing songs of praise. They jump according to Him, to them. Not yun ang worship na. Actually, it's not. Because the real, uh, the real worship demands a sacrifice. Let us try to look at in the Old Testament time. In the Old Testament, so that yung worship na ay perfect, they have to offer the Lamb of God. They butcher the Lamb of God and the blood of that Lamb, they're going to pour out, from that, pour it out sa temple, is sprinkling nila sa altar, sa the mercy seats of Jesus Christ. That was in the Old Testament. That was being prevent figure about the Messiah. That is typology study of the scripture. Yung lamb na kita natin sa Old Testament is the same thing happened in the New Testament. Sino ang lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world? Jesus Christ. Anong nangyari kay Jesus Christ? He was being offered to God through crucifixion. Namatay sa sapos 2,000 years ago for the redemption of our sin, for the atonement of their sin. In the same thing also in the Old Testament, without shedding of the blood of the Lamb, there is no atonement of the sin. In the same thing also in the Old New Testament, there is no remission of sin without shedding of the blood of the Lamb on the cross. So, nangyari? Nangyari, kapatid. But according to the Nian Catholic, yung nangyari is just only a meal. Now, if it is just only a meal, therefore, yung crucifixion ni Jesus Christ, it's only a Roman execution. But that is not true. Yung meal na nangyari before his crucifixion, that was the meal of the Passover, is talking about his body and blood, is the real thing. It is a real food, real body, and real blood of Jesus Christ. That's why ang nangyari after that, after that Passover of the following day, Jesus Christ was crucified. It is not just only a Roman execution, but it is a sacrifice to offer to God His blood and His body in order for us to receive eternal life and eternal salvation. That is important for us. That's why we Catholic we continue to do that. Every time we have a Mass, we continue to have this Eucharistic celebration because that is a sacrifice of praise. Without that, that is not worship, that is not mass. While I was a Protestant before, what I did is that, as a pastor, para di akong pari noon at that time, pag maubusan na kami ng hostia, tsaka yung wine, I order my the elders and deacons. Sabi nila, Pastor, wala na tayong ano, hostia yung tiny white house. Ang sabi ko naman sa kanila, you just buy Skyplex. Anyway, this is just only a symbol. And not only that, after that, then the, the, the elder came to me, Pastor, naubusan na tayo ng wine. Okay, don't worry, you have to buy Coca-Cola because that is just only a symbol. That's why every first Sunday of the man, month, pag wala na kaming tiny white rose at saka wine, ang prepare namin is Skyplex at saka Coca-Cola. So para rin ako, pare, kunin ko yung... I'm going to break it, share it to the to the church, my church before. And then I lift it up, yung skyplex, sabi ko naman. On the night he was betrayed, he talked to bread. After giving thanks, he broke it up and said, This is my body broken for you. Sabi ko naman, sabay-sabay natin kainin mga kapatid. So pagkatapos, because it's this malutong, kahit anong ipatong, so when we crack, when we eat, the skyplex, nag sound effect agad. So, Yon ang nangyari sa amin kapatid 
nung ako ay Protestant, di ba? But when I embrace by this Catholic faith, I found out that this is true. This is real. We give more importance now. Unlike before, we don't any give respect. Because may, may mga leftover pa yung mga anak namin, pupunta doon, kukuha at uminom ng mga Coca-Cola at saka kainin pa yung Eucharist. But when I embrace the Catholic faith, nakita ko yung sacredness, yung holiness. Pag may mga leftover pa, inanun ng mga pari, pagkatapos inumin at i balik sa sa the art sa doon sa tabernacle so they give respect because that is the body if that is the real body and the real blood of Jesus Christ so we should give homage respect but for us we don't give any respect because it is just only a symbol that's why sabi dito ni Paul sa first uh, Corinthians let us continue therefore to mga kapatid ang tindi nito kapatid the 27. May connect sa 26 muna tayo. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes again. This is proclamation of His coming. This is proclamation of His death, His resurrection, and His coming soon. Jesus Christ really will come back soon. Let us prepare ourselves. Let us be worthy in the presence of God. Let us be holy before God in His presence because our God is holy. Our God is perfect. That's why the Bible says, Let us ought to be holy before Him. Let us come to Him with reverence and respect. Yun ang sinasabi. And proclaim the death and His come. Kaya nga, kaming mga converted pastor to the Catholic faith, we are bold enough to preach the gospel. Even outside or inside the church, we have to speak the truth. Nothing but the whole truth. Because the truth that can be found only in our church, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. In 27, 1 Corinthians 11, 27, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. So if you are in an unworthy manner, you are guilty against the body and blood of the Lord. Now, what do you mean by this unworthy manner? Is that you doing sin? It is, is that you keep on sinning and then you eat the body? No, that is not the focus here. Let us try to continue in the verses 28. Para makita natin ang sagot. This is the bottom line. It is not your personal sin. A man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks of God. You have to examine first before the bread and drink. Meaning to say, you have to understand first what is this bread? What is this blood? What, 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 what is meant by this before you eat for anyone who eats and drinks without the rico ito na for anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment of himself so it is not the personal sin that we did every day but it is how we recognize the body of the Lord if you eat and drink without knowing or understanding you sin against the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You pass judgment of yourself. That's why we should be, sabi ng mga kaparehan, we should be on the state of grace. Of course, if you acknowledge that that is the body, you understand the meaning, you understand that what is the Holy Eucharist is all about, you will give reverence to God and you will say, Lord, sorry. You will confess your sin because that is very important for us to understand this thing, this 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 holy Eucharist, kapatid, ang problema natin, mayroong pang mga, not all, maraming mga, yung mga lay ministers, hindi naman lahat, they are not prepared. When they officiate, they help, especially the kaabak. Ano nangyari? Sabog pa sa sigarilyo, amoy nikotin, amoy alak, at pagkatapos, pinapasobo pa niya, yung ano, parokyano. I think that's not good. We have to prepare ourselves. Not only the laico, not only the parishioner, but also us, lay ministers, especially the priests also. Okay, let us continue. What is the effect of not recognizing the body of the Lord? First, you will pass judgment on yourself. <coughs> Excuse me, not only that. That is why many among you are weak 
and sin. And a number of you have fallen asleep. Fallen asleep meaning you die. But if you judge ourselves, we will not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are. So that's the reason why many of you are so weak. Why? Because you don't acknowledge, you don't give respect, you don't give reverence, and you don't acknowledge that it was really 2,000 years ago consecrated by the Lord Jesus Christ. It was consecrated by our priest. It turned into the actual body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't understand, and the effect is that you will have a weak body, a sick body, and some of you have died already. Yun, kapatid, ang mangyari sa atin. That's why we will change our mind now, as we know already. Now, there are some question. No? Now, ito pa. Sabi dito, why bread and wine? Bakit bread and wine? Because it has something to do. When the Israelite was liberated by the hands of the Egyptian, when they celebrate the celebration, they bring bread and wine, they ate together, and that was, that was uh, what we call the feast of the Passover. Every Passover, they eat the unleavened bread and wine. Historical yun sa Israel. Yes, yearly sa Hudyo, yearly in Israel, they celebrate the Passover. What is meant by Passover? They fast from life to death, from the hands of Egypt to the land of Canaan. So every time they celebrate that one yearly, they eat the bread and drink the wine. It happens during the time before Jesus Christ was betrayed. Since Jesus Christ was a Jew and the people who follow him, mga hodyo then they celebrate the Passover. But this Passover na they celebrate is the feast of the Israel. Israel. But this Passover that we're going to celebrate right, right now is that when we have Jesus Christ, we pass life from life to death. That's why every time you attend Mass, we are reminded by God that we, are, we pass life from to death. Actually, it was a Passover during Mass. That's why it's important for us to join, to attend Mass, if possible, daily. Now, according to the, according to the Genesis book of Genesis 14, 18, 20, why bread, why wine? Because Melchizedek himself, the high priest, no? who bring bread and wine to Abraham, and he bless Abraham. In Hebrews chapter 5 and 6, anong sinasabi doon? You are priest forever in the Melchizedek order. Jesus Christ is priest forever. Since Jesus Christ produces another and many priests, and who are these priests? Ito ang mga kaparian natin ngayon. Yung mga obispo natin ngayon, yung mga parishioners, tayong mga parishioners, mayroon tayong mga kaparian. They are from the older order of Melchizedek. They are priests forever. Then they have the right to consecrate, to consecrate the host. And it will turn that wine, that body into real food and real drink. Now, where can we find that one? In the book of John chapter Klaro, klaro ito, mga kapatid. In the book of John chapter 20, verse 21 to 23, sabi dito, This is the authority that God has given to them. Peace be with you as the Father has sent me. So I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. This is the authority that God gave to his disciples. And this authority was passed from generation to the generation until sa mga kaparian natin. Kami mga protestante, we don't even say, I forgive you for your sin. Because we don't have right. And we have no nerves to say that because we don't have authority from the Lord. And we don't have the holy order that we, when the first, uh, the first disciple received that one, so we could get also no we don't have that one but it is the only only our priest historically nagprobyan mga kapatid no that's why yung katoliko yung church natin hindi yan masisira sabi pa ni yung presidente natin is 20 years from now the holy catholic church will go no it's it will not sabi ni Xi Jinping sa ano sa Chinese 
he will try to destroy the Catholic Church. Even the ISIS is trying to destroy our Catholic Church. And even some extremists is trying to bomb and burn our churches. But you know what? Kahit sunogin pa nila, but our faith will not change. As a pastor before, when I embrace this Catholic faith, yung faith ko ay lalong lumalalim at I really love to serve God in this church because this is the only church has the Holy Eucharist and has the Mother of God. That's why as a Catholic, I urge you to continue to our faith and understand, give reverence, and give homage to the Holy Eucharist because it is really the actual presence of God that is found on that sacraments. You have Jesus and I have Jesus. Let us continue to hold on our faith. Now, see? Uh, the good thing also in Catechism of the Catholic Church in paragraph 1405, ano, tingnan about the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist provides the medicine of immortality. Tama yung sinasabi, biblical. Tama yung sinasabi na book of John chapter 6 verse 48. Sabi doon, you will have eternal life if you drink, if you eat my body. So, it is the antidote for that. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, your, your poor parents, when they ate the manna, they died. But I am the bread of life. If you eat this bread, you will not die. Meaning, antidote for that. Yung CCC natin is nagka-inline sa Bible. Hindi ito nagka-aw, nagka-ano, nagka-salungat ba yun, sister? No? But go together, no? Parallel. Antidote for that. Food that make us live forever in Jesus Christ. So, this is the power of the Holy Eucharist. Now, as what I've said, the only person can celebrate the Mass or officiate the Holy Eucharist, the priest that we have right now, because we have that authority. That's why I really respect our priest. Nang nalaman ko lahat according to the Bible, I respect, I obey, and uh, I listen to them. I even pray for them. That's why when I went to Marti Dabao, marami akong mga pare na meet doon, especially si Bishop uh, Apego, yung mga pare doon, Father Ray. Talagang ganda, ang sarap talagang makisama nila. When we went, si Sir Adam and I, when we went to Baguio City, na meet namin si Bishop Bendito, yung mga kaparehan doon, talagang ang sarap talaga. And I really love to serve the Lord in this Catholic faith because I want to help our church, our people, our parishioners to understand more about the teaching. My friends, this is what I'm going to encourage you. No matter what happened, let us move on, let us go on with our Catholic faith because this is the Church of Jesus Christ. Ano sinabi ni Jesus Christ in Matthew 16? Tu is Petros et sopreham pitram et de pecabo ecclesia miam in porti in perinum prebalibum adversum miam. They want to destroy our church actually. Especially the ecclesiastical masonry that is inside the church right now. Ecclesiastical masonry. They want to destroy the Catholic Church. But ang sabi ni Lord Jesus Christ, Thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. Even the gates of hell will not prevail against this church. And Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind her on earth will be bound to heaven. Whatever you lose her, that will be loosened in heaven. No one can destroy the church of God. Many centuries have passed. Nasira ba ang katoliko? Hitler is trying to destroy the Catholic Church. Napoleon Bonaparte is trying to destroy the church. The Turks, the Turks, they want to destroy the, the, the Catholic Church. But even until now, the Church of Jesus Christ will remain. Because the church, this church, the Catholic Church, the only church that has the Holy Eucharist. Sino po destroy them? And this is the integral part where you and I, as a Catholic, as a Christian, will be united together. Marami ng pastor ng Katoliko because of the Holy Eucharist. So, ito na ang mga kapatid. Continue, go on. So, thank you, and God bless us all. Tonight, I'm going to read first, because there are many people today who is watching right now from all over the world. We have John de Guzman Casal. We have also Pio Emarinciana. 
Thank you. Si Rosalyn Arlene Monte Gakrama. Ang inyong pariente. Gakrama man. Jason Bangoy. Dodot Palayo. GP Pagara. Noe Bonayo. Rayon Manolito Bocanegra. Elizabeth Banuelos. Rini Babor. Julius Lawas. GB Nakasio. Teresa Conde. Okay. Adoding Dizem. Sister Juliet, okay. Good evening, Brad. Kati Ibao, Michael Salles. Michael said, Good evening, Brad. Watching from Las Peñas. Good evening to you, brother. We went there. Sa Las Peñas. Papuntang ano, papuntang bako. Sister Kati. From Aden. From Aden. Sabi niya, Kumusta ka na daw? Lalo ka nang gumaganda. At maraming blessing. Ruel Oka. Charlie Maribao. Charlie! Charlie! May gabi, Brad. God bless you. Was you from Lapu-Lapu City? Okay. Shirley. Misael Ortega. Teres Paulino. Lucille Magtuto. Ging Meglobredo. Okay. Maria Doris Agosto. Obiso. Class with me ako during elementary. Amigo sa na ako niya yung husband. No? Christita Ognayon Tantaniting. Sa Santo de Binget. Sabi niya, ganda nyo, nakapunta kayo sa bridge sa Galoperet. Yung Galoperet ba? O, John Michael Santos Tinggal. Akay Laktayan. Juice Noster East. Charlie again. Okay. Olivia, Olivera. Sekera Pongayan. So, brothers and sisters in the Lord. So, I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful that even uh, with this uh, 30 minutes of sharing to you about our catechism, it's Really, I'm so grateful that you're watching, and I hope you're gonna you're going to share this also. Sa Facebook nyo ishare nyo di sa iba para mabio naman nila so that they give us an idea, and you can help our evangelization. Actually, this is our evangelization by sharing our topic tonight. So you're part of this evangelization, and I believe God will give you more blessings, more healing from COVID virus. We don't have to worry about COVID virus. What are we going to do is to partake, eat the Holy Eucharist. Iwan ko bakit sinasara nila ang church. Ayaw ng demonyo. Pero still, we will be prevail. Because greater is He that is in me than the one who is in this world. Who is this great that is in us? Jesus Christ. It's nothing to worry because God has not given us the spirit to fear again. But a sound mind, love, faith to God. And sharing one another in Jesus' name. Let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I would like to pray for you this day, especially yung may mga karamdaman, may mga sakit, may mga diseases. I believe, we still believe na ang ating Panginoon ay may kapangyarihan para i-heal niya tayo. The Holy Spirit is here right now. I want you to close your eyes, pray with me, and I will pray over for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I pray right now to those who are having sicknesses, Lord, to may mga karamdaman ngayon sa likod, pag pain, I command you in Jesus' name. Be healed. Pain, get up from that body. And there will be a restoration of your tissue. Your skin will be restored. You will be healed by the power of Jesus' name. And Father, as what you do, Hold me right now. I ask the listener to watch, watch this uh, video. Kapatid, ilagay mo yung kanang kamay mo kung nasaan yung kirot, yung pain. Ilagay mo doon, pray over mo, and put it now in the part portion of your body because that hand is no longer your hand. That is the hand of Jesus Christ. Continue to close your eyes, pray, and feel the presence of Jesus is touching you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Yung cancer mo, walang-wala yun sa Panginoon. Nothing is too difficult. Feel the touch of the Lord. Feel the touch of Jesus Christ. That hand is no longer your hand. Be free. Be free from that kind of sicknesses and diseases. Cancer cells melt and wax in the presence. Be gone. Ito'y mo yung katawan mo. Where the pain is there. Say, 
Text me, just inform me, be informed. 